One thing that I learned from this book is what Warren Buffett fears and actually how that fear has affected his investing decisions. The thing that Warren Buffett fears the most is death. No one can stop death. Even at a young age, Warren was terribly afraid of death, the idea of not existing. It's always been a fear that he's had. And nobody really wants to die. Everyone has a little bit of a fear of death, but uh, in general, Warren was very much terrified of dying. And this has actually affected his investing decisions. We've all heard the sage advice from Warren Buffett that the ideal time to hold on to a stock is forever. And this idea of holding on to a stock or an object or anything forever is in reflection of his own fear of death. He wants to create a sense of permanence. When he passes away, his legacy still lives on. And that's actually one of the main reasons why he very rarely sells a stock. He doesn't trade on and off like most people do, but Warren Buffett buys investments for a sense of permanence. And I wouldn't even think of Warren Buffett as much of a stock picker as he really is an investor, somebody who wants to purchase a company, to own a company, to have something and to build up from it. But all of these interactions, all of these investing decisions in many ways comes from a fear of death. This idea that this fear of death is something that drives us to create things, a sense of permanence, a legacy. Is that in and of itself a rational or irrational view on investing or even living your life. I've always viewed that one should not live one's life out of fear, but rather out of love. It sounds very corny, I understand, but I think that when you really love something, when you have a strong desire to help and whether it's working in business, uh, whether it's people, whether it's family, your community, you end up getting a lot more out of it. If you do a task out of fear, the results just never seem quite the same. Now granted, Warren Buffett has been incredibly successful, but I think he's found a way to merge the two things. It's the fear of death that creates the sense of permanence that he wants and desires within a company, but he picks companies that he ultimately loves. And so it's this combination, an interesting combination of both fear and love that also guide Warren Buffett's investing decisions. So when we think about investing and we look at Warren Buffett's advice, we also need to keep in mind that some of his advice about buying a stock and holding on to it for a long time is partially due to his innate fear of death, of giving things up. And in fact, I can speak for myself, I find it very difficult to sell my stocks. And it's not necessarily a fear of death that is why I'm holding on to a stock. I've also just experienced that I tend to sell a stock and then it just goes up in value and I'd rather just hold on to it and hold on to it for years because if it's a quality company with intrinsic value, it tends to do very well in the long term. While Warren's desire to buy and hold on to a stock indefinitely or just a business indefinitely. Is that something that we ourselves should do? Does it also lead to a level of attachment that we attach ourselves to failing companies or failing endeavors? Many YouTubers in the personal finance investing community are somewhat minimalists. We try to detach ourselves from the material wants of the world in the hopes of achieving clarity of mind, of peace, of happiness contentment. And in some cases, it moves away from that mindset of needing to have stuff, needing to own something to to hold on to it for ourselves. And I'm not saying that there's necessarily a right or a wrong, but it's something to think about. At the end of the day, death comes for all of us. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. A lot of people say like because of the YouTube algorithm. But you know, the YouTube algorithm works because people genuinely like things. I think that YouTubers will ultimately become successful and channels will become successful because of a genuine liking of 
the content that the creator has. And that if you do not like this content, you probably shouldn't watch it or you shouldn't subscribe, you shouldn't like it. I might say you shouldn't dislike it unless you think it's egregious. But yeah, like it because you genuinely like it. Because I'll appreciate it. I'll appreciate it a lot. All right, folks. I'll see you soon.